Uh, hi, my name is Mark Lanza, president of the Motion Picture Sound Editors. Thank you for attending our uh, Sound Advice event for June 16th of 2020. Uh, as uh, you know, all the events have gone virtual thanks to COVID. Um, anyway, uh, but this is, uh, this is the one with Mark Franken from uh, Sound in Sync, and he's going to be demoing EDIQ for us. So, uh, Mark, uh, please take it away. Okay. Thanks, Mark. And thanks to the MPSC and, uh, and yourself for organizing this uh, Zoom event and, uh, and to everyone here um, this evening uh, for being part of it. Um, quick intro on myself. Uh, I've worked, uh, I think I started in Sound Post uh, around the early 90s in London, uh, worked for a post-production TV house there. Uh, came back to Sydney and um, got into film drama work uh, and, uh, well, sorry, TV drama and then worked in film drama, uh, usually working more on the dialogue side than the sound effects side. Um, so during that time, I found opportunities to create applications to help with the workflow and uh, or even finding new ways of doing things to speed up what we do. And uh, so we get, get home on time kind of thing. Um, I'm going to demonstrate EDQ uh, version 3 to you. Uh, EDQ version 1 came out about just over 12 years ago. Um, the version 3 came out August last year, uh, which was quite a big change from version 2, where we can um, do a lot more customization and I moved a lot of the preferences and settings into a more logical location. Um, so. Uh, because of the, how, the, the time that we're, we're aiming for kind of a 15 minute demo, uh, including Q&A. So uh, this will be more of an overview of the app. Um, uh, so I was gonna show you here uh, on, this is the Sounds and Sync website, just soundsandsync.com. Um, if you've got any more uh, questions or certainly want to go look into more detail about what I've uh, shown you here today, uh, this top video here on this page goes through the new features of EDQ version three. Uh, but if you scroll the way to the bottom, uh, you've got four demo videos here, which goes into the full explanation of how you create a queuing session, loading the data into EDQ, um, doing exports and setting up all the settings in EDQ and also lastly, customizing the band designs. Uh, so more today is more of a, like I said, an overview and also just giving you an idea of the features that are a part of EDQ. Uh, or if you have used EDQ, it might be something that you haven't used before or just um, you know, allow you to investigate that further. Um, I was gonna show you now, uh, yeah. So uh, aside from the videos here, another place to look at for help is you know, the good old help, help menu within EDQ. You can save the user guide. I'll save here to the desktop. Um, it's got a lot of information here, which of course you can search for particular keywords or you've got, um, you can go through here. Uh, the next thing from the help menu is the EDQ tag list save that to a desktop and that's a two-page pdf which is generated um i won't uh you, you basically refer to that when we're going when we're creating the queue session but it's something that once you've used EDQ a few times you won't really need to go on here once your queue session is is created um and the last thing i was going to show you here from this help menu is uh EDQ sample files if you that saves a zip file to the desktop. And within that zip file uh, is this queue session, which I've got down here in this window uh, and the shooting script PDF. And uh, I'll just close the data I had in EDQ. And um, so to start off, I'll just show you, um, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I'll just go to Productions, Manage, and I'll remove um, all the settings that you set within uh, EDQ uh, saved within the Production Settings file. So I'll just delete the one that I have here for Accidents Happen, which is the, the uh, queue session that's uh, saved within um, EDQ. I'll just delete that so you can see exactly what happens when you load this, if you were to load this yourself. Um, just, 
Um, just restart that. And drop on. So we're just going to load the Q tracks, ADR Q tracks from that file. And I'll go and obviously into details of what's in this. But I just wanted to show you um, basically, I'll just create a new production. Default accidents happen because it picks the production name out of that file. Uh, and I'll just use the defaults. And from here, there's quite, a, there's quite a bit you can do in terms of customizing everything in here. But just wanted to show you now um, that the, the, the standard settings or default settings within EDQ um, will actually generate quite usable uh, PDFs. So if I just go export queues or Apple E, it'll generate all of these PDFs, uh, an actor PDF, um, which looks like this. So that's that particular layout. Um, a director PDF, which has got more detail uh, within about each queue. Uh, and then the engineer layout, um, which is this one, which you know allows you to write uh, which are good takes and all that kind of thing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just drop that PDF on the desktop so we can refer to that. But yeah, it's just to show you that, um, you know, even though there is a lot of settings in the uh, interface now, uh, you know, there mightn't be many you actually have to change. So for when you're getting started, um, it's, it's, it's quite simple to get up and running. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just open up, this is the session that came, that comes part of those sample files. Just open that up in Pro Tools. And uh, so this is a Q session of a feature film. Uh, it's five reels. And uh, all this could be uh, your Q um, ADR for a TV show in the same way. Uh, you, and you can have multiple episodes in the one session. Um, so EDQ works quite differently, say, from uh, quite a few different ADR applications in that you don't actually store the ADR Q data within the application. The Q data uh, is either stored in a Pro Tool session, or that's how you would normally store it, um, or uh, you can import data from a Excel file. Um, I'll actually show you here. Um, this is an XLS uh, file with basically the same Q data in that format. I can drop that into EDQ. Uh, it auto aligns the fields here. Uh, and I can import, uh, import it. And just wanted to show you that so like if you're starting off and you've started and generated several queues in a different, say in Microsoft Excel or a different third party database, if you can export it as a tablet limited text file or an Excel file, you can drop it into EDQ and export a Q, uh, sorry, an AAF to create one of these actual queue sessions. So you don't actually have to generate those queues from scratch. Um, so that's a, just a handy hint there. Um, so I'll just close that. Um, so coming back to this queue session, the, the, the reason, um, so yeah, that, that's a big difference with the way EDQ works. It doesn't store the data actually within the app. It most likely will store it in, with, in the actual queue session. And the reason I created EDQ that way is that uh, one, I, th I find it really helpful to be able to have um, these cues shown in a visual format in the Pro Tools session. So you can cut dialogue and actually have those, these cue tracks in the same session. Uh, so you can see exactly where ADQ lines are located, make sure they start and end at the right, lo right location. You're not looking at a, a, another app and just checking time code numbers and that kind of thing. It also helps in terms of, uh, you know, these days it's usually when the show gets recut. Uh, it's a lot simpler to recut your session or when you recut your session with an, uh, possibly with an app like uh, Ediload uh, that can you know, compare picture, picture EDLs and recut your session, then your cues are automatically come up with you. And I find it's a lot easier, you know, even though you might get um, all your clips cut and big holes put in, at least you can then just trim these cues, clips out 
they make sure they start and end at the right place and play them long with the video again, rather than looking at time code numbers in another application. Um, and uh, the last reason is, is, is actually quite handy uh, when you're creating cues, these cue tracks like this, um, you know, maybe your, um, your production or your mixer has started uh, mixing the, uh, the production or dialogue while you're still queuing ADR, it's handy for, you can actually just send them these cue tracks and they can see while they're mixing exactly where things uh, are happening, you know, and you can update them on a daily basis without them actually having to refer to PDFs and that kind of thing. So with all that said, um, I'll just go through what uh, goes into this uh, queue session. Um, EDQ loads this data uh, from uh, the way that you name the uh, tracks. Um, so we've got a track here that's called a prod info track that contains the, let's go back to the start here, the actual production name it contains the real, in this uh, example, because it's a film, a real number, a uh, picture version number for that reel. Uh, and you do that for each reel. Uh, down here on this track, we've got a scene numbers track. You don't need to have this, but it's a really handy thing that if you want to have scene numbers allocated to a particular queue, uh, this will automatically allocate uh, the scene number to each queue, uh, depending where it's located. Um, and you can actually uh, generate this automatically with our application eddy load. Uh, and if you go to the edit load page, I won't demonstrate that now, uh, but down the bottom here, uh, let's see where it is. Uh, maybe it's not, uh, <laughs> oh, it's not there at the moment, but anyway, certainly on our um, <laughs> YouTube channel, there's a video um, showing you how to, oh, if you click this blog post here, creating a scene change track, there's a demo video here. It goes through exactly how you create one of these tracks from a picture EDL using edit load. Uh, and then uh, below the scene change track, we've got a separate track for each character. Uh, you can have multiple tracks or dupe tracks for a character. Um, this allows you to um, cue alternate lines, say for this narration character. Um, there was alternate versions of a particular line. Um, and down the bottom here, we've got a uh, loop troop, uh, sorry, loop group queues. So you can have a general queue and specifics during that queue. Uh, but most of the time you would have a separate track for each uh, character and you would name uh, each, I'll just bring up here in case this helps. Oops, uh, name each track with the, uh, the character name, uh, there's a character ID uh, and an actor name. And then within each clip, there's a, uh, the actual line, open that up again. There's the actual line text that you wanna appear in the PDF. Uh, then I've got a reason tag, a reason nine and a priority. Um, so, the track names, uh, you, you would, it's usually easiest to, if you just enter those uh, information within Pro Tools manually. Um, uh, but in terms of setting the clip names, um, we've got a special window within EDQ called the session interface window. And I'll just use, you can change these reasons, uh, but I'll just use the defaults. And what this, uh, I'll just go up to the first clip for Gloria here. And I'll just, what you can do is I can just get that data from that clip, clicking the get clip button here, or you can uh, type Apple G. And that shows you uh, the, uh, the, the uh, dialogue here or that we have selected uh, within this interface. And it just, it's handy to be able to use, if you're using the session interface window, you can uh, change the size to be a, a bit larger. Um, you've got spell checking within this window. Um, we should do. And 
not sure why that's not working at the moment. <laughs> Maybe, oh no, here we go. It's uh, telling you here. Uh, you've also got a an undo. Um, and uh, but the, the the other oops the other handy really handy thing about the session interface window is you can load a shooting script into it. So this is the shooting script for accidents happen. So producers uh, thankfully allowed me to use. Uh, we can drag and drop that onto the session interface window, and it will load all the character names and the lines of each character into this list. Uh, and we can then go say, and just show all the lines for Gloria. Uh, those yellow backgrounds here are actually, uh, it's picked out the um, annotations of the PDF. So can be, you know, if uh, say your directors highlight a particular lines that they know they want to have ADR, they can actually go through and uh, highlight them within the PDF and you'll see them here. Uh, but what this uh, window allows you to do is you can just double click these lines and then they instantly appear up in the line in the text field here. So what that allows you to do is, I don't actually have a guide track of this show in the session, but you can control, click, say if this was the guide, you can find the start of a particular line, hold shift, find the end, and then you can tab down, press um, option, option command G to create an empty clip group. And say there, and what's, if you've got several lines in the one scene, to create cues for it's best to, to locate where these cues need to start and end, create the empty clip groups. Uh, then say you can say highlight all the lines for scene three. Uh, so say we just want the three clips and you can double click the first line. Uh, say we need to do all these lines for background traffic. Uh, we won't set a priority. Um, and then we can just click Apple S, oops, select the clip, Apple S, and then it fires that detail, that line into here. Uh, now I'll just go to settings, uh, on set, I won't clear all fields. So now say you want to, you know, most of the time, of course, the actors don't say exactly what's in the script. So you can play the line and then just update update it as required. You can click Apple F to bring Pro Tools to the front, play the line, go and change the line as required. Once it's set, you can go Apple S to set the clip, or you can go set and select next. Selects the next clip there, double click the next line, Apple F play the line. Once it's right, ready, um, set and select next and so forth. So that's a quick way of being able to cue the lines for the a scene using the shooting script as the source for the line so you don't have to type the whole line in from start. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much how the, the, the nuts and bolts of how you create one of these cue sessions. I didn't explain before, we've actually also got a, um, a production note track here. Um, that's uh, so if you want to create any notes for, if you're the supervisor and you want to create notes for your dialogue editor, or say you want to, um, you've come from the spotting session and you've got all these folding notes, you can create a folding note track and that will allow you to export a separate PDF for that, for the folded walkers or whatever you need. Um, so yeah, once you've created all your cues like this, uh, to get that data into EDIQ, just go file, export, session as text. Uh, you can just leave it selected all as defaults, but all, the only thing you need included is the track EDLs. Just leave the rest as default um, and select OK. And I'll just save that onto the desktop. We're finished with the session interface window. Um, and, oops. Yeah, that is the file we just saved here. So just, is that gonna open? Where's that gone to? 
for some reason that isn't opening in text tip. Anyway, I was gonna show you what that looked like. Um, so here we can just um, select the defaults and here I'll select to load in the ADRQ tracks. Um, if we've got department node tracks, we load that and we do a separate um, export pass of them. So we're just loading the ADRQs, we confirm the, uh, the tags uh, that we used. Um, so obviously if you were going to change those tags, you would set them before you do the queuing because um, the tag reason numbers are assigned within the clips. Um, so at this point here, all our data from the session is loaded into EDQ. Uh, and uh, from, I'll just go through some of the details here. The, I can set a production ID. Uh, and that is actually the main thing it's used for here is the, the naming of the PDFs that are generated. I'll set a, a document version. Say this is the first version of the PDF you're generating and you want to send them to the director for chain changing, you can set a document version, say of draft or whatever you like there. Um, this segment detail is uh, showing where each reel starts or so if it was obviously TV episodes, which where each TV episode starts and ends. So here you can set a segment number. So this came from the, um, oh yes, I still got this open. This came from these tags here. So uh, obviously if this was episode 101, 102, 103, uh, EDQ would load that and you would see that here. And that was used, uh, that information is used um, in the, uh, say the headers of the PDFs that are generated. Um, the way that it can be used uh, for the way the PDFs are named and um, it can also be used within the actual queue numbers. So if you want queue numbers with the episode number uh, or even the picture version number of the episode, all of that, it's all highly customizable. So um, yeah, so that's how that's uh, loaded. Um, and here uh, it lists all the uh, characters that were in the queue session. Uh, if you option click one of these, uh, it'll switch all of them on and off. So I'll just export Gloria. Um, the settings here, you can set a client name, studio supervisor. Um, there's filters here, to, uh, filter queues by priority. I won't really go into all of that too much. Um, I'll for these an ADR summary, I'll give you uh, select the segment detail option here so we can see uh, what that looks like. Um, on this uh, window here, we select how we want to name the uh, PDFs and all the files that's generated. Uh, and we can just drag and drop these tokens here. So if we want the date and time in the actual file names, we can certainly do that. Um, on this tab here, we set up everything to do with the queue number, queue numbers that are generated. By default, we just start each queue number with counting from one uh, for each character. So each for when you flip to a new character, they'll start counting from one, but you've got lots of options here to start queue, uh, queue number starting from each scene or starting each segment, say real one starting at 101 and real two at 201 and such like. Uh, here we set up uh, what we want the actual queue number to contain. So it'll contain the character ID and the counter. Um, but like I said here, we can contain the segment number or in this case, the real number. Uh, scene number, all highly customizable. Just drag and drop what you want to go in that field. Or you can actually type in extra characters here. Uh, the last tab here, we select uh, what we actually want to export. So the top list here, we select what PDF files and these ones here shown with a blue name here are the default or generic um, are PDFs that come with EDQ. Uh, you can also customize these and I'll go through that shortly. Uh, down below here, we've got extra options uh, for the PDFs. 
um, fonts. Uh, well, that's sorry, that's just for the footer. Um, you've got different sort orders, margins, uh, and lastly, in this box here on the on the right, uh, you can export all sorts of things like um, a text file containing all the data, or you can select an Excel file. If for some reason you want to export this data and load it into something else, uh, you can create an ADR summary uh, as a text file or Excel file. Uh, here's the option to create an ADRQ session. Um, you can create MIDI files if you're loading this uh, into uh, Ediprompt. Ediprompt is our application for doing the recordings. You can load this data um, into Ediprompt into a Pro session so you can see exactly where all the cues start and end and have the text and visual cues appear on screen for the actor to perform their lines. Uh, also an option to export subtitled files for creating quick times. Uh, yeah, so there's all of that. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you here, which was new as part of EDQ version three, uh, was the option to be able to customize these PDFs. Uh, you couldn't do that in two, and it was one of those long-standing things that we wanted to implement. So to, if you, um, this is the PDF before, which is the bog standard uh, engineers sheet here. Uh, you can customize anything in the header field here. Uh, there's also the scene band here. Uh, so sorry, I should explain the, it's basically this PDF layout is created with three different bands. There's the header band, there's the scene band here, which comes, is shown between the cues when a new scene uh, is, uh, is found. Um, and then there's the, also the cue band here. So these are selected here with the header band here, scene band and cue or summary band. So if you want to customize any of this, uh, we first need to duplicate the layout. So we just select the one we want to do, uh, customize and rename it. So I'm just going to call this engineer accidents happen. And then that gives us the option of actually not only be able to select a different header, uh, and if we hover over it, we can see what we've selected. Um, but it also allows us then to select a custom band. So what I'm going to do is create a custom header for this and actually put the logo of the production into it. So I'm just going to go uh, select the, or click the design headers button here. And there's a separate design for the portrait uh, version or the layout version, just because that width is so different, we need to create a different layout. Um, and that particular layout was using the, uh, we can see here, the character header. So we're just gonna duplicate that and call that character IH for accidents happen. I'm going to customize the the uh, landscape one. So all you do is you double click that preview image, and it brings up the band designer. Uh, now all of these things are customizable in terms of text, uh, the text font, font. As you can see, bold italics. You can go to, go to town with um, with customizing all of this. Um, so what I wanted to do was. Uh, show you uh, how to put a logo on here. So to do that, I'm just going to resize these fields. Um, I'll delete this. Now ADQ will by default load up the um, the data that is loaded within ADQ, so you can get a preview of what uh, of how big these fields have to be. Um, and I'll just drop in a a picture object here. I'm going to then in this picture, if you see on the right hand side here in the property list, uh, click this little yellow, uh, white, sorry, circle. And on the desktop, I've got this accidents happen logo. It's got a transparent background. So just double click that. And this is quite large. So we're just going to, uh, it just offers you the option to resize it so it's not 
saving that much data within the production settings file. Uh, and then we can just resize that to fit however you want. Uh, then I'll just click retain and close. And now you can see our logo was set up for the landscape version. Um, now we can either double click the portrait version and do the same there, or we can drag and drop the landscape and then EDQ will automatically just resize the elements across the new width. Um, we can double click that, uh, sorry, the portrait layout. You know, maybe you're only gonna use the landscape and you don't need to do the portrait, but I'll just, oops. I don't want to do it in here. I'll just, I'll just do this. Just move that down there. So just roughly, I'll just show you like that. Retain and close, and then we've got our two layouts. So this is saved as the character accidents happen band design for our header. Click save. And then we can go to our new uh, layout that we created and select that character accidents happen band design. And if I hover over that, we'll see the landscape. If we go portrait, and then we'll see the portrait version. I'll just leave that as landscape. Uh, you can have Apple S at any time to save that setting. Um, otherwise it'll offer you to save that setting at the end of a export run. Um, now, just reminding you back here, we're selecting to export just the cues for Gloria. And I'll just export the, um, actually, I'll just go actor director. I'll go to be written, just seeing how we're going for time <laughs> and, uh, and a summary. So I'll just go Apple E to export. It's created this folder uh, here using the settings we set um, to set those, uh, the file naming. And here we've got a, this is the actors PDF. So we can see the uh, styling. I didn't actually go through that too well on the session interface window, but you can set that styling in the session, session interface window. So it allows you to highlight different words from the queue. Um, that same styling comes up in the directors list, but uh, that uses the different layout and band designs. Uh, so it's got more information for the director. Uh, the uh, to be written, uh, you can have a look at that. Um, to be written has got a special layout for the queue and that it's actually got an editable field. So you can actually send this to be written uh, PDF to a writer and they can amend the queues if they want. And then you can actually, I won't show you now, but you can actually drop this PDF back into EDQ and load in just the lines that have been changed, uh, create a, a ADF and load those updated lines into your queue session. Just a way of getting lines to a, a director and having those updated line, lines come back into your queue session. Um, and here's, oh, sorry, there's to be written. And lastly, I was gonna just show you the summary um, actually, I'll just export, oops, not that button, sorry, the main, I'll just export, just to give you a better idea of what the summary looks like, I'll just export all Apple E, I've just updated that um, summary PDF here with all actors, uh, or, or all the characters, uh, and that particular summary that we selected on the general settings tab shows the segment detail. Uh, and so it gives you an overview of um, how many cues are required for each actor, how many two written lines, uh, sorry, BVOX, sorry, I didn't get a chance to go through BVOX, how many two written lines, um, but it also shows you that detail here. We've got segment detail, so you can see how many cues there are in each reel. Um, but you can also see, um, how many uh, cues are required, say, for a technical reason or a production request. So it's a very powerful and useful uh, PDF to be able to generate. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much an overview of what um, 
how you create a queue session and, and, and Pro Tools, how you load those queues into uh, Eddy Queue, quick overview of how you create the settings and export those PDFs. Um, if you were to export these other files here, they would get generated in a folder next to the PDFs. Uh, now I should just leave that file here open. Uh, what I wanted to show you uh, briefly was a new feature uh, that I just released a week and a half ago in the NDQ version 3.2, which is a um, new feature. Love you. Um, with, uh, uh, with Actors Mobile ADR. Um, so if you uh, do need to record any cues um, uh, where you can't get actors into a recording or ADR studio at the moment, uh, what you can do is load in, uh, you load, need to load in that Eddie Q PDF uh, because the data that's loaded needs to have a Q number assigned to it. Uh, and now there's a new window that says uh, called export movies. And in here, or actually, sorry, I've loaded up the wrong file. I need to load up the cues that relate to the video that I want to load. Um, I've got a separate project here called Poster Candy. Um, and here are the PDFs that are generated. So I'll just load one here, just the all time order PDF. Oops. Now that shouldn't happen. Um, uh, let's just try that again. I'll have a look why that one happened. Um, as I said, it's only a week and a half old. Um, now, uh, with that PDF loaded, I'll just go export movies. And um, that was just a warning that the movie that I had loaded is no longer there. I just have to reload that. So this window here shows you all of the uh, cues that were in this, or that are in this um, data, in this PDF. Uh, and what I can do is load in a mover file. I'll just enter the start time 005949, double enter. And what I can do is uh, for Actors Mobile ADR, we set this uh, preset 960 by 540. Uh, I'm just going to export a movie file for each character. Um, and uh, I can also overlay a watermark uh, that has, say, the actor's name. And select OK, uh, select Export Movies. And it's just exporting the three movies that are queued for the three queues that are for this uh, character Brad. Um, and I've exported the movies with a seven second pre roll and two second post roll. Uh, and, well, sorry, the first cue is actually right at the start of that video in here. Uh, but what that allows you to do, this new window allows you to do is drop these uh, movie files onto this app that Todd and I have created called Actors Mobile Editor. I'll drop this folder on. Oops, not that place. I'll just drop it up here. And uh, you can select all of these, embed the uh, metadata, and then export an encrypted file. And you can then load that file directly into an iPhone or an iPad with their iOS app and have the actor record those lines wherever they may be. You know, even if you're not, in, if, even if, uh, you know, actor stalking, you, uh, this whole lockdown situation has passed. It's still also a handy way to get temp lines for a film or TV show uh, while an actor's, say, shooting on a different show and they can record this uh, in their trailer or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's pretty much uh, an overview of what I wanted to demonstrate. Um, the other thing I was offering as part of this Zoom session was uh, if any of you uh, are new to EDQ or if you would like, um, uh, I'm offering two free rental licenses uh, for EDQ. And uh, so if you would like them, 
um, just uh, go to the website uh, contact page and just fill in your details. And if you can also in the message field, just enter your uh, I like user ID and I'll certainly um, deposit them into your account. If you can do this, say within a couple of hours at the end of the session, um, then I'll be able to knock that off today. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you do uh, get those uh, rental licenses, then once you've redeemed them, then it allows you to buy a full license uh, at 50% off. So uh, you basically just need to buy two more rentals and then you get a free full license. So uh, yeah, happy to support uh, you guys. Thanks for being part of this Zoom session. And um, yeah, glad to be part that, you know, great um, that uh, the embassy uh, offer this for us developers to be able to get in, uh, connect with you guys. Thank so, you, Mark. Uh, just, uh, yeah, offering, yeah, opening this up. If any of you have questions, um, maybe wave your hand. So I'm not sure if Mark has got you muted at all. Um, but uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions if there's anything you want me to elaborate on. Yeah, I didn't know about that new feature about being able to put out the ADR clips. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'll, yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, I'll certainly have to fix that bug today, but uh, <laughs> there's hey, Mark, a new one coming up very soon, but yeah. Does that output the beeps as well? Can you output it, or is that part of the uh, actor's the Todd.io app. Uh, the the, the Todd.io um, app actually generates the wipes and the visual uh, streamers and beeps uh, and actually puts the text on screen. And uh, so you, all I do is generate the movie. Before, without so this, you actually have to nice. generate the movie yeah. manually with the right start times and all of that. So it's, uh, it certainly saves, um, wow. saves your life. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Sure. There, um, Mark, there, there seems to be, as you've explained very well, there's, there's tons of new features compared to the earlier version, which is always fantastic. But for those of us like, well, me anyway, um, who barely had it together the first time I used it, has anything fundamentally or structurally changed? Like if I was to open an old session from a couple of years ago, in terms of the queuing protocol, like this is how you queue a carrot, this is how a, a, a track name is named. Has, have there been any changes in that that I need no. to be aware of so I don't have to start from scratch again? Or is it's is that part still basically the same? It's still the same. You can okay. load up an EDQ version two, version one session, it'll still load. Uh, yeah, you know, some things have changed, but it will still load up that old, like, you know, you used to put tags in the session name, mm -hmm. that will still come through. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, oh, the, the, the only thing you would want to be aware of is when you load the, um, oops, uh, anyway, oh, anyway. Um, when, when you load up your text file, you just um, click the button that says legacy tags and that because I changed the ordering of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but apart from that, I made sure that everything you can do in EDQ version two is still available in three, cool. like the default PDF layouts are pretty much how they were in two uh, and with how they're named and everything like that. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Great to see you. Super, super, super cool. Hey, Mark. Wilson here. By the yeah. way, hi, Ruth. How are you? <laughs> Seen you in a million years. Um, so we're, we finish, well, we're, we, we shoot our ADR with Jeffrey at Todd AO over at Deluxe yeah. in Hollywood. And obviously we had to scramble to do the last three episodes and figure out how to do the mobile ADR bit. Uh, so kudos to you for working with those guys. They're great. They're part of our family. We love them. Jeffrey, fantastic. So my question is, because, you know, we, we're trying to figure out how to navigate going forward. Loop mm -hmm. Group's a whole different thing, but especially sure. principal ADR people. We, we had to scramble to kind of figure out how to do a, a, a triage version of mobile ADR using iPhones, teaching people, et cetera, et cetera. So what I like about this app, and my question is getting, uh, how big are our picture? They're just, 
the, the picture files are just the clips of that particular line with some pre-roll and post-roll, yes? Correct. And they're opening it on their iPhone or their, their, their tablet, right? Yeah. If they're in the iOS world, because that's another question that we can get to, not everybody is. Yep. And we ran into that with Android people. Um, so they can just open up. How do we, do we have to get them this app? Number one question. Or how does it work on their end? And how much training is there on our end to get them to understand what we might have them do? Um, to be honest, I haven't actually used it. <laughs> it, it was such a new thing. That I know I it's new, yeah. But, um, but, but Mark, so, that's uh, why we're here for me and you, for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I know it's been around. I did see when they've launched it. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, in terms of making it user-friendly for the actors, I've heard of productions. Um, so I'm getting away from my, my mic. Um, the um, productions have... Uh, loaded the iOS app onto an iPad, got right. everything, loaded up the data, and just shipped the iPad, which I think is quite a sensible well, idea. And we, we kind of did our version of that too. You know, we got them pictures using Box or, or whatever that what NCIS LA ecosystem is used to doing. And I, I just want to see how this can improve that, I guess, my question. And I'm, have you worked with, you're working with Jeffrey over there at Tadeo or just Rob or? Rob and Luciano. Or Luciano. Okay. Um, uh, but, because but, my question, and I think anybody else who might want to use this, can we have our ADR mixers kind of uh, accessing and, and making this go smoothly? Yeah, I, 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 I uh, it would probably be best talking to them because yeah. the, the, they, you know, fielding these calls from uh, all the different productions, and I'm sure that they've worked out different ways of handling this. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe people uh, an ADR mixer getting on a phone, on, on a different phone to just listen in, or however is best works. And the, you know, obviously there will be different situations depending on on the situation. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of how EDQ works with this is, is, is really purely just to make those videos. Uh, and, okay. then, uh, and then, you know, Tadeo implemented uh, updates to this, uh, this app, which you do need a pro license for, uh, which I didn't mention, uh, to be able to load that data automatically. Uh, and then from there, it's best to talk to them. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how does this work on the, the talent end? What do they need to get this to work? Hey, Wilson, oh, yeah. there's some really good YouTube videos on the Actors Mobile AR app. Uh, of this thing? Of the one that, not, not Mark's program, but the Tadeo thing. The Tadeo one, right. Yeah, yeah and it, it, they're really clear and they're really good and it looks cool uh, yeah. and simple for the actors. Which but, is, uh, of course, what we want. Yeah, but what I was told by my engineers at Universal was that there's a licensing issue. Uh, they don't have a, like for Universal, I would need a broad spectrum licensing issue for a lot of people and they don't do it. It's individual licenses. That's all, that's all I know so far. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I, I, but, I, I, um, I, but the I, demos, the demos are, are, are clean and good. Yeah, good, I, I'll, I'll get in on that. You know, because I've gone way back with Mark, I figure, okay, let me check in. I haven't even talked to Jeffrey or, or Rob over at Tadeo because we're all kind of waiting to see what's happening, right? <laughs> sure. Ooh, oh, yeah. not me. No, oh, me. no, not anybody here in these little cubes. <laughs> in, um, in terms of, as you'd mentioned um, a little earlier, Wilson, in terms of getting the actors what they want, and this might be a more of a Tadeo actors mobile thing versus an EDIQ thing but you know like as as we just we just saw in the video here we had three lines with three separate videos what about the actor who says no i want to do all five lines at a run mm. and instead of having five separate videos you they're going to have want to have one video which is super easy to do if you're on an ADR stage but obviously it's a little different so 
I don't even know if this has if this question would have anything to do with you. Oh, or, look, as, or as, far as, I, or, as far as I know, it would, you know, it's, it's, you're locked into doing those three cues in that way, you know, it's, okay. it's one, you know, but Fair there's enough. so much, you know, and I, and I think you only, you don't want to make it too complicated for the actor either. So it's kind of like, well, this is the way we're doing it. They yeah. barely, they barely want to do the lines we ask them to. Hey, do. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're going to argue about the three cues we ask. Them. <laughs> <laughs> they will argue that. <laughs> not, not I want to do five more cues. No. <laughs> uh, any other questions on uh, ADQ? With remote ADR and um, a couple of different systems, and because the actors were working from their homes and with their own flexible schedules, they were actually pretty more accommodating than they sometimes are on the stage. So, yeah. sometimes, you know. Yeah, so, I'll be honest they, with you guys. We didn't even let, uh, we finished our last three episodes completely remotely. But we, and this is private between all of us, we did not even let the principal actors know that this was, there were any other options. And so we worked around it. I mean, we just didn't do ADR for them because of all these issues of, of creating mobile brush fires. And then Mark, I want to get back to the whole, because we had to run into it with people who are on Android. Uh, and is, if that's a question for Todd A.O., I'll talk with those guys about it. Yeah, yeah, that's just a, a, a yeah. Now, I, I'm just, um, j j just uh, you know, want to make most of the time for it, all of us here, seeing as we're here for, for EDQ, is there any other questions? Thanks, Wilson, but um, was there anything else in rela relation to EDQ that we had questions for? I had a quick question. Uh, is everybody here using EDQ? I've used it before. Um, most of the time I do, I do feature documentaries, but I do like about 30% scripted features and I'm working on one right now. So I'm going to be using it for this. I just, was, just a testimonial. It changed my life. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Pleasure. I agree. Wilson. I agree. Take so the, pro the problem now though, is that we're taking on an assistant editor's job. Thanks to Mark. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, should, this should be the picture editor doing this, and now when if they find out, if productions find out that we can do it as sound supervisors, they're just going to go, okay, you deal with it. So that's yeah, we have you to thank, Mark. Well, we we still have an ADR supervisor. I am still hiring yeah. people in that position, just so you know. Okay. I thought that was a position that was going to disappear 10, 12 years ago. It did not. So there's always that. And certainly in the feature world, an ADR supervisor runs this show. And um, it, it just, it's just, for us, it's the only way to go. Uh, it just makes things super efficient. So if you have any questions, you can even sidebar me if you want. Um, but it works. <laughs> it's fantastic, Mark. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for this. Uh, this Zoom meeting and the overview of the new version. Well done. Yes. Look at Any all that hardware questions? on the shelf behind you. I know, I was gonna say yeah. congratulations. <laughs> I know a couple of people were still asking how did they get the discount exactly? So could we repeat one more time, Mark? Yeah, sure. Anyone? Well, no, they were asking you how to get the yeah, discount. Yeah, they were asking you how they get their discount on the 50% off thing on your product. Oh, okay. Oh, I sorry, sorry. Before, but they were, they were asking. Yeah, okay. So if, if you just go to uh, my website and just go to um, the, uh, just go to the contact page. And if you can just fill in that form, put your name, details, email address, obviously, uh, and just your I like user ID in the message. Uh, and then uh, whoever does that within the next two hours, I'll uh, deposit uh, two free rental licenses for EDQ into your account. And then once you've used them, uh, if you want to uh, a full license, just buy two more rentals and I'll give you a full fee, uh, a full license. Does that answer? That's awesome. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Mark, awesome. thank you so much for doing this.
Okay, uh, pleasure. We'll have this uh, posted on our YouTube channel for the Motion Picture Sound Editors, uh, probably sometime in the next couple of days. And uh, please, uh, if you're members, uh, you know, check your emails. And if you're not members, check. Uh, sometimes we invite non-members to some of our events. So check our Facebook or other social media for upcoming events. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, uh, Mark. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Marks and Marks. My middle name's Mark. I'm in there. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that works. Okay. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank Pleasure. you, everybody. Bye. 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 Be well. Bye. Stay Bye. well. Hey, Wilson, I'll email you to say hi. Yeah. Fantastic. Good to see you. Nice to see you.